Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Vadim, and I work for Fastly. So what's going on with this talk? You might wonder, huh? reducing origin traffic without caching? Is it even possible? The short answer is yes, but let's dive deeper. When people think about a content delivery network, SDN, they often think about caching static content. That will definitely reduce your origin traffic, but is that all that CDNs can offer nowadays? Absolutely not. There are a lot of benefits you should get from your CDN provider or build it yourself. The range goes from security, DDoS protection and WAF, to things like compute, running your application right at the edge of the network you control. That can open a whole spectrum of possibilities on how to build websites and improve your user's experience. Done staging, caching with personalization, content upload sanitization, and many more. But wait, what about reducing origin traffic? Let's look at another use case. What would you say your CDN should do when it doesn't have the object requested in cache? It should request it from the origin, right? But what if the content has already been requested, but hasn't arrived yet? Normally, this may look like this. All the requests go through the CDN and land at the origin servers. But there is another way. In Fastly, we call this request collapsing. This is a feature that every good CDN should have, and they can call it whatever they want to call it. But in essence, it doesn't do that. It doesn't send all the requests through. It's actually very simple. When, request, when the requested object is not in cache, it's a cache miss. One of the cache nodes fetches the content from the origin servers. When this happens, the object simply checked as being requested. The next request to the same object can identify that. So instead of going out for the same thing, somebody already went and it could halfway delivered for what we know. It simply goes into a queue. Here's another uh, view on this. Instead of sending all the requests to your service, they will send the wait. The other request may join the queue by waiting. As soon as their response is received, it's delivered to all the requests that were waiting at once. But wait, it's just a single note. How about other nodes? One way to solve this is to assign a node to each unique request. This way, we've, uh, the way we've done it is by making a hash of each request that would determine which cluster node to use. On this example, node one is cluster, uh, cluster to node two, and then went to origin. Node three also clustered to node two because the hash is the same. So when the requests are landing to the same data center, we're calling them point of presence, by the way, or POPs. All the same requests are collapsed to a single request at origin. By the way, because it's deterministic, which node is fetching and caching each object is greatly improving cache heat ratio too. Sure, the cache could be spread to other nodes, and it does, but if it's not there, we know exactly where to look. And if it's not found, maybe expired, maybe purged, the same node will work on fetching the new copy. Kind of convenient. But wait, what about other pops in other geographic locations? Let's say you have this network. How all those pops will know what's going on? Well, they may know if the, we ask them to. It's generally beneficial to lend users' requests to the closest pop. TCP IP works better with lesser latency, 
TLS handshake happens faster, etc. But actually, the same goes about communication to origins as well. Thus, you communicate with users and your origin servers from the closest pops and maintain your own connect connections between those data centers. Since you're doing it for often enough, chances are those connections are already established and hot. TCP windows are open, so you could just stream your requests through as fast as physics in this universe is allowing us. That's cool. But what does it have to do with reducing origin traffic? Well, what it means is that you can apply the same request collapse method every time a request leaving your pop, whether it's sent to actual origin or to another pop. By the way, in Fastly, we call in those, um, we call in this shielding. So the same mechanism is applied to every pop on the way to the shield pop and then from the shield pop to your origin which means it collapses request on several levels. By the way, at Fastly, we are not only doing it, but we're also showing the benefit of request collapsing in our portal. The benefits are mostly self-explanatory, but let's touch on some of it. We, want, we all want the same thing. We want to build efficient sites and apps, right? That's remarkable that request collapsing when designed right, coupled with the clustering and amplified by shielding is solving multiple issues. One of them is cost. The egress traffic, that's one that is coming out of your origin actually has a price tag. The server load itself can also be, get costly too, um, which comes to another aspect, scalability. The few requests end up hitting the origin, the more users can entire infrastructure serve, the more efficient your site is. While we're not directly talking about scalability in this talk, it's another thing that's important to remember. It could also be viewed as the same problem too. The more requests land to your origin infrastructure, the more load it creates, the more traffic it generates. So what's the difference? Well, generally, when we talk about workloads like APIs, we're talking about scalability. And when we're talking about workloads like live streaming, we're talking about origin egress, because this is what it matters at each step. Sure you do want scalability for live streaming as well. But those usually delivered from either media stores or uh, other buckets. So it's storage and not entirely um, a CPU driven um, expense. But what is your what if your requests are not that simple? What if it's not just get, but let's say post? Can a CDN identify the request payload as the same? A good CDN should. If it's a large post and maybe includes things like GraphQL, it may require some payload parsing on compute side. Talking about GraphQL, some people already build their own service based entirely on Fastly compute. So it's not, it's not just doable, it's already happening in the local pop next to you. Well, this is all I had today for this small talk. Thank you for listening and have a great day.